Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting. And today we want to take a look and, and really start a series that we're going to do this month with this variety of fixtures that are behind me. So what I want to do in these videos is look at color mixing moving heads and just moving heads in general and take a deeper dive than we've ever taken before on this channel at the different feature sets available inside these lights and what you can expect out of lights like these and what to look for when you're purchasing them. Today we've got a couple fixtures here with us. Uh, just to show you, we'll turn them like way down. All right. This friend right here is the ADJ CMY 300. Uh, he's been an old standby. We, we like him. He's a good unit. Uh, 300 watt LED source, like most ADJ products and more, uh, and, and a lot of brands, um, you know, they've, they've really pumped out a lot of efficiency into this unit. So it's very bright for a 300 watt LED fixture. Um, and it's got CMY color mixing. We'll talk about the rest later. And then we have the Gamma TX6 right here. Uh, it is a 400 watt LED unit, though not quite as efficient. So don't assume wattage equals brightness. That's never the case with LEDs. Um, that's not a direct correlation ever, um, but it's a great unit. We like it a lot. And comparatively, when you compare the price, the, the pricing on this unit is just insane what you get for the, the value. So they're two different units. Um, they're the type of fixtures that we look at when we're recommending fixtures for people that want a moving head with color mixing. Now, this isn't the end all be all. This isn't every fixture, but it's gonna give you a good example of what to look for and how to find and, and look at videos and really begin to understand what CMY fixture or what color mixing fixture is right for you. So these are both spots. Again, um, they both have CMY color mixing. Most spot type units are gonna be that way, though in the next video, we'll cover CMY versus RGB color mixing in spot units, uh, showcasing the Elation Fuse profile. But until then, let's crank these guys back up I'm going to shut off my video light uh, so that it's just these lights on so that we can really compare these two lights, take a look at them. Now, first thing you're going to see is if we have it at full, of course, it's going to blow the camera out. So I'm going to pull these down to a comfortable spot where they look good on camera and, and start to run you through some different cues here, some different things that these two lights have. So first, we're looking at them. I zoomed them to about the same amount. And so the purpose here, and I see we get a little bit of banding from the CMY 300, that's probably due to my shutter speed um, in the camera, none at all on the, the, the uh, gamma. So these are both right now near the middle of their zoom range. And the point here is to show you the difference in perceived brightness. Okay, brightness when we're talking about a LED source, we're talking about a moving head, uh, is never equal to wattage, okay? Never, brightness does not equal wattage, however, Perceived brightness is what you want to look at. How does it look? We can take measurements with a meter, like I've got, oops, I've got this one here. It's about a $2,000 light meter, a nice one, that I can take in the middle, on the sides, compare these two. Now, the Vizzy CMY 300 does cut through a little bit better uh, in the air because it has a hot spot in the center, as opposed to the flat field here from the Gamma TX6. Neither is right or wrong. Uh, this will cut through the air a little better. Flat field is going to look a little bit better when it's projected onto surfaces like we can see here. Okay, and so if I get my, my butt out of the way, you can actually see that. Then let's go ahead and take a look here at zoom. So I've zoomed these both in to their minimums. Now, you may be able to see, we got to turn it down even more to see it, of course, because we've zoomed way down. Um, the TX6, it's a 2 to 20 degree zoom, and in that range, it is able to focus a sharp beam at that 2 degree point. The Vizzy CMY, it's not quite as narrow, I think it's about 4 degrees, um, so it's not going to cut through the air as bright, um, but, uh, and, and also at the very end of its zoom range, it doesn't focus um, the beam the, uh, into a nice circle. So that's something to really be aware of, um, something for me to hop in here and note that Okay, if you're comparing two fixtures, it's like, yeah, the Vizzy CMY 300 is a brighter fixture, but 
when you're looking at lighting, when you're looking on a stage, apparent brightness really matters. How does it look? How does it cut through? And these are the things that are harder to measure. Yes, we can look at photometrics, we can look at foot candle or lux readings, but it doesn't always tell the whole story. And so the TX6 being a zoom fixture from two to 20 versus the CMY300, which is a, oh, I forget, four to 46 or something like that. Um, there's a big difference in perception there. And so even though the CMY300 is technically brighter, um, oftentimes, like if I step to the back of the room here and I know our studio, the office here isn't huge, at this minimum zoom, the TX6 actually does look brighter to me. Um, and so that's really key to know when it's shooting through the air, okay? Then we're gonna zoom them all the way out. Boom, this is max zoom for both fixtures. So again, yeah, so the, your CMY300, it is gonna zoom further, okay? You know, you can see that here. It's wider, you can cover more area, but at max zoom, again, the apparent brightness and the focus of the TX6 is better. Um, so neither is right or wrong for every situation. It's just about seeing the difference, you know, between a couple of fixtures here, understanding how that can impact you. So now, in order to compare these fixtures a little more, talk about the kind of features you see in lights like these, I've taken them both to about 50% zoom uh, so that they are about the same level, same size. And then we're going to run through some features. So CMY color mixing is what we're here for. So here I just brought in the cyan at two and a half seconds of fade, and uh, we can see that there on our wall. Uh, we're gonna notice visibly to my eyes that the CMY, the Vizzy CMY from ADJ is a little bit more of an aqua cyan, uh, whereas the Gamma is a little bit more, I don't know if you can see that in my hands, it's a little bit more of a, a steel blue, okay? Not right or wrong, just you know something you wanna know about, if you're considering buying these. Here it is from the front. We're buying a fixture like these. Okay, so next we'll go ahead, magenta. They both have nice magentas. Um, I think I prefer the CMY 300's magenta in this case. The blue, I think I prefer the TX6, but the difference is subtle. Yellow, we'll look at both cameras there. Um, on the yellows, you, you know, when it comes to yellow, there's a lot of opinions on what makes a good yellow. Um, in this case, I like the CMY 300s a little bit better. It's a little golder, whereas the TX6 is a little more neon, and I think that shows in the footage. Now, in next week's video, we're going to compare CMY mixing versus color wheel and some of the different advantages and disadvantages. Uh, with color wheels, they're always going to be in different orders between different brands, but this at least allows you to see in a demo-type format Two brands of fixtures, two color wheels, how they compare, uh, and, and some cool stuff there. So we'll pop back in, grab a gobo, and go into magenta here. Pop my light out of the way. Hopefully it doesn't fall over. <laughs> and uh, so when we look at gobos, okay, you're going to have two types of gobos in pretty much any fixture. We'll turn them up here for the camera, okay? Um, you're going to have fixed, non-rotating gobos that are typically not replaceable. And then you're gonna have rotating gobos that not only can rotate, but are generally, uh, they're gonna be replaceable if you want to put in your own designs. In this case, I grabbed a gobo that was very similar between these two fixtures so that we could compare them here, uh, both the beam going through the air and how it looks projected on a surface, okay? You can see um, that I don't have the same gobo in both units because they don't both come with the same gobo. So, that's something to be aware of, but I chose the closest one as a recommendation, as just a way to compare them. Now, let's look at the motorized, or the rotating gobos. Uh, when it comes to rotating gobos, more often than not, they're going to be optimized for projection like we see here. Now, every fixture is going to have a different gobo size as to how big the gobo is based on where it is in the optical path um, physically. So in this case, they're at about the same zoom level, but the TX6 from Gamma actually has a bigger uh, rotating gobo, okay? Again, I chose a similar-ish gobo. They didn't have one that was real similar, but something that had about the same amount of light coming through it to compare the two here in magenta, because I love magenta. Next, let's go ahead and move these guys uh, so we can look at them over here. 
And the reason why we want to look at them over here, there we go, over, nope. Yeah, that's the place. Um, the reason why I like to show them on the wall now is to talk about prisms, okay? Prisms are the next thing that I absolutely love that you're going to find inside fixtures like these, okay? A moving head spot like these is going to have one to two prisms, typically. Both of these units have two. The benefit of two is that one is typically going to be more optimized for through the air looks, the other more optimized generally for surface projection. So here, again, same gobo, didn't touch the focus, popped in the prism for surface projection. Uh, they're both three facets in this case. And then popped in the second prism, okay? Now this is where it gets interesting because the second prism on both of these is independently rotatable and they can both be put in together, okay? Um, that's not the case in every light, but that's why we love these two fixtures so much. Um, you can see that they do look different. The CMY300 uh, prism number two is a, uh, a reticular or it's a horizontal prism. In the TX, it is a eight facet, I believe, and a three facet. They're both round. The eight facet just has a big hole in the middle to make it look better through the air. Okay, um, so we'll go ahead and now go down to the second prism on both of them, the eight facet with a little bit of a hole in the middle, not much, and the four facet. Okay, uh, then I just always like to, when I'm talking about fixtures, demo a split color from the color wheel. So that's two colors on the TX6. In this case, that's a green blue, and that's a red green or a pink green, no, a red green on the CMY300. Um, really just good to look at prism with split color, how that looks, how the brightness compares. Again, both fixtures at the same brightness level and about the same zoom. And you can see um, to the eye, they're really about the same brightness. Uh, because when we think about brightness, we think about a spot fixture. I know this sounds, this starts to get complicated, but it's not just the photometric report from the manufacturer where somebody took a meter in white uh, at the zoom level and, and took shots. The, the colors matter, how much light comes through each color, how much light comes through the gobos, you know, at different zoom levels, how efficient are the optics? Because they don't take photometrics at every degree of zoom that would be a little overkill, uh, but zoom optics are different efficiencies throughout the optic. It's not that uh, they're always the same efficient in every spot of the zoom, okay? And so then I wanted to pop those out as well, and uh, looks like on this one the gamma still has the prism in it, um, my mistake, but just show you some movement here um, so that we can kind of wrap up here. So in terms of movement, uh, they both got it. Uh, they both do a great job moving, hence the moving lights. Uh, do, 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 do. And I think they're both really great picks. So when you want to compare two moving head spots, actually, let me just slow them down so you can see their slow movement real quick. So now we got these guys slowed down so you can really start to see the difference. Now, I know that was like record speed uh, to go through all of the features of a couple different moving lights, but I think it allows you to really see some of the differences and, and some of the things that you can look for in moving head spots with CMY, like these two fixtures. Uh, if you're looking for a fixture like this, you say, hey, we want a moving spot and we want color mixing because color mixing is just so great when you need to make transitions on stage allowing you to be able to make them smoothly between colors and not have a fixed color wheel where you see that happen, okay? Um, I love moving heads with CMY, and I love the fact that we get to compare them for people and help make the right recommendation. So if that sounds good to you and you're looking for moving heads, uh, whether with color mixing or not, head over to Learn Stage Lighting Gear. We've got links below to both of these fixtures, and we've got so many more options as well. So if you have any question, you're like, hmm, let me think about this fixture versus that fixture, fill out our quote request. Let us know. Fill out the contact form. Ask us a question, and we would love to start that dialogue to look at your space, your needs, and then compare a fixture, uh, compare some fixtures for you, and let you know how they would work in your space so that we can help you make the best decision for your needs. 
The biggest thing with us is we have never been and never want to be a one-stop shop, a one manufacturer shop, where we just always recommend the same manufacturer. At the end of the day, we sell a lot of different manufacturers because we want to get the right fixture for you. If that sounds good, head over to the gear site and we will help you find a moving head with color mixing. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.